My name is Peggy Mason. I, I'm a professor of neurobiology at the University of Chicago, and I'm really excited to share with you the results of a collaboration with Jean Desetti and Inbal Bartol, where we looked at empathy and helping behavior in rats. We've known for some time that rats show the simplest form of empathy, emotional contagion, such as one baby cries, all the babies cry. We wanted to see if rats would go beyond emotional contagion to actively help another rat in distress. This is really asking quite a bit of a rat, as active helping requires that the helper rat downregulate the fear he is experiencing through emotional contagion. In other words, the helper has to suppress his natural response of frozen immobility and actually move to help the other rat. So we put a free rat, the rat with the black dot on his head, into an arena, and in the center is his cage mate trapped in a plexiglass restrainer. The door to the restrainer can only be opened from the outside by the free rat. Here you're seeing the first five minutes sped up on the first day of testing. Even though it takes quite a bit of rat courage to venture into the scary arena center, the free rat persists in moving to the center and trying to figure this restrainer thing out so he can help his cage mate. So now in this clip, the rats have been in this paradigm several times. This is the fifth day of testing and we're viewing the session in real time, but after 25 minutes have elapsed. What you see is that the free rat is very focused on the door. You will see him open the door for the first time in a moment. What I want you to notice is that the free rat freezes. He freezes because the door falls over, and since it's the first time he's opened the door, he's surprised and he startles by freezing at the sound of the falling door. There he goes. Now, after a brief exploration of the strange land of the restrainer, the liberated rat runs around exploring the arena. Wherever the liberated rat goes, the free rat follows, jumping on and licking him. For about five to ten minutes, this apparent celebration continues, with the free rat very active and always in close proximity to his liberated cage mate. Here's day 12 in real time from the very start of the, ses of the session. The free rat is placed in the arena, and after briefly checking that this is the same gig as every previous day, he promptly opens the door. But he no longer freezes when the door falls over, and his reaction to liberating the trapped rat is quite muted, suggesting that the free rat is not surprised by the results of his actions. In another experiment that we don't show you here, we put two restrainers in the arena, one with the trapped cage mate, one with five chocolate chips. Uh, remarkably, the free rat opened both restrainers and in no consistent order. And to our shock, the free rat shared the chocolates with the liberated rat. This told us that helping a cage mate is on a par with chocolate, a truly palatable and favorite rat snack. We are confident that it is the trap rat that elicits door opening, as the rats do not open the restrainer when the restrainer is either empty or contains a toy rat. Moreover, even when we prevented the free rat access to the liberated rat, he opened the door, showing that he did not simply want to play with his cage mate. All of this tells us that acting on empathic feelings to help another in need is a biological and, in fact, a neurobiological mandate. It's in our brain.